Hi everyone, I'm Nomad Masood. Um, I have the unenviable task of um, making the first talk. I should just say, uh, not just to sound cliche, but it is a huge pleasure to be in front of all of you. Um, if someone had told me when you know, I was a, a repressed gay teenager that I'd be standing in front of all of you talking about my life and what I can contribute to this extraordinary group of individuals, I would say, you're tripping. <laughs> but, uh, but here I am, and it really is a pleasure. So, let's get started. Um, I've titled my talk, A Gay Scientist's Perspective, Tackling Issues in the LGBT Plus Community, because it really it combines two of the most, arguably two of the most important aspects of my life, being a scientist and being gay. Um, so, I'll sort of start by introducing a little bit about myself, but not too much, because this is really, I don't want this to be entirely about me, I want this to be about us and what, what I have learned um, in my life and what I can share with you guys. And I'm hoping this will be interactive so you guys can ask me more questions uh, at the end. Um, so a little bit about me, more note of mine, because that's the honest really about me. <laughs> uh, so I'm from a, a country that criminalizes being homosexual. Uh, according to the Pakistan Penal Code, at the very least, uh, if you're convicted of being gay, you will spend your life in jail, and if you're subject to more mentality, then it is certain death. Um, so that's what I had to face. That's why I was repressed, because it was a real threat to my life. And this is something that is faced by many people in many, many parts of the world. So this all, that fear is all too real and something that I've certainly felt. Um, but I'm very privileged to have an education. I really am, and I cannot underestimate that. I'm joined here by my colleagues um, as well. Um, so I, I'm lucky enough to have bachelor's and master's, now currently a PhD, and I'm joined by a lot of my, my, my PhD uh, 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 friends. So in my very, very short uh, time on this planet, um, there are many, many issues I, I feel the LGBT plus community faces, and a lot of them will be addressed today, but I'd like to tackle two of them which I feel like I, I can make some sort of difference to um, because it, it, it's something that I can tackle based on my experience. Uh, namely, that we are often told that LGBT plus individuals, and I've, I've really I've heard this a lot of times, people try to tell me, surely that goes against nature. We don't find LGBT plus individuals you know, in the natural world. And as a scientist, the back of my hair always stands up. You know, people think of it as black and white, as you know, male and female, and that's it. It shouldn't be anything else. And the other issue, and arguably more thorny and political and controversial, is religion. Uh, you know, how does one deal with that conflict? And by the way, this is not just something that I face back home. This is a global issue, and I'm sure you guys have come, you know, people have come across this time and again. So really the question is, you know, can I shine a light on these LGBT plus issues? So let's uh, go straight into the first one, the nature debate, and really just to say that it's not straightforward. So I have to, I have to throw that in. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, um, so sexuality, really, gender identity, you know, I think we all know by now, is it, it's complex, it's vast. And for, for, for even for those of us who are you know, well versed in the LGBT plus community, you know, we do have to keep abreast of it. Um, and that's not my job today, to sort of inform you about all of that. But it's the fact that a lot of people feel, as I said earlier, that it's just male or female. Surely that's it. I mean, who's heard of a trans fish? Who's heard of a bisexual hyena? <laughs> like, surely that can't be correct. But actually, I'm fortunate because I'm a scientist and I study marine science. And I'm like, hold on, I know something about fish as well. I don't know anything about, but I know something about fish. <coughs> and those of you who watched Finding Nemo and the less interesting Finding Dory, Clownfish are, are sequential hermaphrodites, and that's just a fancy way of saying that almost all of them are born one sex, and based on a size hierarchy, they will change their sex. So sex is not fixed in these fish. Now that's just one example of it, because I appreciate all people here, I'm not scientists. But that just throws the, the, the nature debate out of the water, the fact that it's not natural. That's just pure BS. And that's just one example. I can talk about this for hours, but thank you, we don't have that. But feel free to join me in that conversation after this when we go for alcohol. Um, um, so once again, I appreciate that a lot of people aren't aware of that. I'm sure a lot of people don't even know what a sequential hermaphrodite is, or that a clownfish have that ability. And that's the value of education. And I appreciate not a lot of people have it. 
But you know, and that's why I think this platform is so important. It's to inform people as well. Um, now, what about religion in the LGBT plus community? That's a little more funny, that because that can be very personal and it's based on opinions. It's based on something we don't necessarily have to justify. Now, I'm going to start with the caveat that we need to, all of us in this room and indeed in the world, it is not our job to change everyone's mind. That's not our job. That's not what we're here to do. I know we're here to change minds and hearts, but the fact of the matter is that we're not going to be able to change everyone's heart and mind. We have to accept that. However, we're not going to do away with the truth. We're still going to keep fighting. So let's start off with some facts, shall we? Now, um, about 78-83% of, of the human population either follows Christianity, Judaism, or, or Islam. Now, the interesting thing is that there are over 10,000 religions on our planet today. And of those, only three out of 10,000 of them, really, are the sort of big three that are arguably the, the greatest opposition against the LGBT plus community. And that, to me, is really interesting. Now, many of those 10,000 religions don't even mention same-sex interaction. I've just mentioned three of them over here. And I'm not an expert on this. I said I'm a scientist. My knowledge is very, very limited. It's very focused. But I quite recently learned this myself. And I'm like, I have to share this. I have to share this. So that is extraordinary. And who are we to say that if we are Christians or we're Jews or divide one by 10,000, who are we to say that that is the truth? You know, it's a, how do we justify that? And that, that's a, just a genuine question. I'm not going to answer it. But it's a, it's a genuine question. And once again, a lot of people just weren't aware of this. Like, I certainly didn't know that there were 10,000 established you know, religions. I knew there must have been more than those three. But once again, it's the value of, of education coming to the rescue. Now, uh, you know, I don't want to sound like a broken record repeating myself, but we have to accept that some people won't have the opportunity to get a degree for various reasons. Some people can't afford it, some people don't have the, just don't have the opportunity. But an education isn't something on paper, it's something so much more. And I have to be very honest, there's so much I learned because of the Cymru, because of being immersed in this extraordinary community. And even if you don't have the opportunity to travel the world, and I've been lucky that I can, just being in one city like Cardiff, you have the opportunity of a free education, an opportunity to mingle and interact with cultures, with ethnicities and religions, to, to learn about values, attitudes, customs and beliefs. And that's completely free. There's no excuse to not immerse yourself and integrate. So, and, and I think that's so important, in many ways more important. And this has taught me stuff that my PhD, my master, my bachelor would never have taught me. It may have taught me something about clownfish, but really this is not something I would have learned. So I'd just like to sort of end with some take home messages. What, and as I said, this is just a snapshot of, of what I think is important because I feel like I, I can contribute. Of course, we're going to be hearing a lot more. And please feel free to challenge me, ask me questions at the end, you know, because I want this to be interactive. Um, critical reasoning is, is, is so important for me because we don't have to accept what we're told. We don't have to accept what we've read or what we're saying ourselves. We should all consider ourselves as individual free thinkers. We have the right to question what we're seeing and what we're told. And you don't need a degree for that. You just have the right to question. And I think, arguably, linked to that, what's even more important is that a true learner, the art of learning, is accepting that you may be wrong. So it's not enough to just question. It's to accept that if you believe something, let's call that X, and that if someone else comes along and says, actually, you know what, what about this, this, and this? And you're like, oh wait, suddenly my belief just doesn't, just doesn't hold water. And it's okay to be wrong, that is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. And that's a beautifully simple concept anyone should be able to understand, I feel. And lastly, I, I cannot overemphasize this, is that the unknown should not scare us. Things that we're not aware of should not scare us. Try to integrate yourself as much as you can. Try to expose yourself to as much culture, belief and religion as you can. The unknown shouldn't scare us. It should be met with curiosity and interest. And the fact that we don't, we, we may fail to understand some cultures and some beliefs and some systems, and that's okay. The fact that we fail to understand something doesn't mean it can't be understood. It just means that we have to try harder. And, um, and really that just leads me to thank you all for listening. Thanks so much.
Hannah Hamas, who's something